Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's discussion on Smart Plan Operations presented by Next Tracker. Uh, my name is Ali. I'm part of the marketing team and host of today's webinars. Um, I'd like to extend a big thank you to everyone who is joining us today. Uh, before we get started, some quick housekeeping. Uh, you're in a Zoom webinar platform, which means that it works very similar to the Zoom meetings that we're all used to. Um, at the bottom of the webinar screen, you have the Q&A module. <clears throat> we encourage you that you spend, send in your questions and we'll try to get those uh, answered uh, at the end of the session. Next slide. So before going any further, we want to remind everyone to be safe on and off the job sites, um, wear your PPE, wear your face mask, you know what to do. Um, next slide. So I'd like to introduce today's speakers, Bill Elwell, Director of Utility Sales at Next Tracker, and Chris Markwell, Commissioning and O&M Services at Next Tracker. And during today's session, our speakers will cover the importance of smart design and software tools needed to properly care for a power plant. In addition, they will discuss how extreme weather and proactive power plant O&M is top of mind at Next Tracker, and the tools available to keep your power plant running smoothly. Bill, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Ollie. Uh, really appreciate you putting together this, uh, this presentation and webinar for our customers. And uh, just want to say a big thank you to everybody who's joined the call. Um, really appreciate all your support. And um, if there's ever any questions or anything you need support with, just let us know. Uh, my name is Bill Alwell. I'm the director of sales at Next Tracker. I've been here for about five years. Um, so I'd like to start off by talking a bit about, the, about our company and um, who we are and what we do. Uh, Chris, maybe you could go to the next slide. So Next Tracker was founded in 2013 um, with a single access tracker as our flagship product. Since then, we've deployed over 40 gigawatts of our NX Horizon uh, product. Um, in 2016, we were acquired by a company called Flex. Flex is a $25 billion company investment grade balance sheet, which means they're the most bankable company in the industry. Um, Next Tracker itself has about a 32% market share worldwide. Uh, and we've been the number one market share leader five years running now. Uh, here in the United States, we have about a 50% market share uh, and we've been the leader here in the United States for the last uh, five years as well. Uh, throughout the globe, uh, Next Tracker has over 375 staff members with eight global offices. Uh, our primary headquarters or world headquarters is in Fremont, California, uh, just down the road from Flextronics uh, or Flex is uh, US headquarters in San Jose. Um, we manufacture all over the globe, which gives us very good uh, supply chain robustness, as well as the ability to deliver at scale for any projects you're working on. Um, our executive team alone has over 300 years of collective experience. And um, yeah, uh, you can go on to the next slide there. So just a, a real quick slide on, you know, the market trends in the US. I think most of us probably have a pretty good grasp of, you know, the what's going on with our industry and where we've been and where we're going. But, um, you know, it's nice to see it here uh, in numbers and, and what's happening. Um, you know, previously up to 2020, the, the industry has grown at um, significant rate, getting us up to uh, scale and and allowing us to reduce costs to a point where we're now uh, more competitive than traditional forms of energy, fossil fuels and such. And um, what that's gonna do moving forward is put us in a position to um, continue to grow and be the primary source of new energy uh, around the globe, but especially here in the US. Um, uh, in the US, we see uh, continued growth and uh, sustainability for our industry here. Go ahead, next slide, Chris. Um, so just some market trends here, um, you know, uh, Wood McKenzie, as you see in this, this chart, shows a 37% annual growth rate for solar. Um, and at the beginning of this year, the first half of this year was one of the largest or was the largest uh, quarter uh, the industry has seen with two and a half gigawatts of installed um, systems, which is just incredible. Um, and that will continue to go. Uh, project pipelines are very strong. Uh, even despite COVID, we're you know still seeing lots of strong um, momentum and, and pipelines with our customers, and we continue to see growth. Uh, there will be some minor delays uh, as a result of COVID, with you know um, 
you know, financial markets becoming slightly tighter and things like that, but still see a very positive outlook for the industry uh, moving forward. Go to the next slide, Chris. So next tracker, um, you know, we're a product development company. Uh, our flagship product is our NX Horizon uh, that most of the folks know of and uh, have done significant amounts of installs. I think we have over 25 gigawatts of installed capacity just in, in the U.S. alone with 40 gigawatts worldwide. Uh, so, you know, our product is widely used and accepted, um, you know, but a part of, you know, developing our NX Horizon, which is based on the architecture of a individually actuated self-powered row, which allows for a much smarter um, collection of data, which is really what Next Tracker is, is built our product lines on and what we pride ourselves on is collecting data and using that data intelligently to develop new products and to make sure that our customers have the lowest cost of, of energy for their plants. Um, and as such, we've continued to develop more products. Um, so our two hardware products here, as we talked about Horizon, we've also launched NX Gemini, which is a two and portrait uh, single access tracker, still utilizes an individually actuated row, uh, self-powered, uh, it's actually a string powered option. Um, so it's rooted in a lot of the same things that Horizon is based on, but also um, has some very different architectural concepts. Uh, we won't go into detail there. And then on top of those two, uh, Next Tracker has prided itself on developing uh, yield enhancement uh, software technologies, uh, which we'll talk a bit more about later, but the first one being uh, True Capture, which is a yield enhancement software tool, uh, and then NX Navigator, which is an advanced control system, which allows authorized users to um, better control their systems and, and operate uh, their assets throughout the life of the system. All in all, just helping to increase the performance and the reliability of the plants that we deploy. All right, go ahead, Chris, next slide. Yeah, so thanks, Bill. Uh, I'm Chris Markwell, I manage commissioning. Um, thanks everyone for joining. Um, so I'd like to start off by talking about our smart design that we have built into our trackers. So we use non-linked freestanding rows, and that gives us the freedom and customization to um, have offerings such as True Capture and some other product lines that uh, I'll discuss as we go through this um, slide deck. So um, next tracker, industry first. Um, we have individual control instead of group control over our rows, um, uh, self-grounding, trackers. This is a cost savings on install and hardware um, for not having to purchase grounding um, hardware. And uh, self-powered trackers. This is another cost savings on install, minimizing the, um, the amount of copper that you have to purchase to do an install. And also gives us a lot more flexibility on commissioning. So we can start cold commissioning long before we have AC power on the site, uh, which is really helpful to making sure our, tar our uh, projects are commissioned and completed uh, on time and we don't have LDs. Uh, predictive analytics and digital O&M. Um, owners and O&M teams have been asking for this and, and um, we provide that now. And um, last, the smart controls and software. So our two largest offerings for this is True Capture and NX Navigator. True Capture is the software offering that optimizes power for a site, and Navigator gives us user control and additional plant protection. All right, so Next Tracker was acquired by Flextronics about five years ago, as Bill said. Um, their factories and supply chains, uh, we have access to world-class manufacturing and quality control. And that greatly helped our global strategy with factories in China, Brazil, and Mexico, especially at the beginning of COVID when China was essentially shut down. We had more options um, for making sure we could meet our demands that our customers needed. Um, <clears throat> so NX Horizon has gone through two generations. The first generation is 2013 to 2016. And the second generation is 2016 to now. The big change for the motors, uh, we use a completely different motor now. It's went from a brush DC motor to a brushless motor. And um, the new brushless motor has a very low failure rate. 
um, the controller has changed. The Gen 1 controller used to have an access panel on the front that was held on with four screws. Uh, the Gen 2 controller is factory sealed, IP67 rated, greatly increases reliability for our controller. The slew gears used to be assembled on site and they needed annual lubrication. Um, now the slew gears are factory assembled and there's no O&M required. They don't need to be lubricated anymore. NCU 1.0 um, had rudimentary controls on the front of it, not giving a lot of access or control to the user. And the NCU 2.0 has a much more sophisticated front panel and it gives control to the user without using a computer. So O&M teams can move the rows if they need to cut grass or do some other type of maintenance work. Um, our dampeners and fasteners have had little changes, but um, one thing that's, um, that's important to note is the install of our factory of our fasteners is now um, done with a battery powered gun instead of um, hydraulics. So smart, smart built into our design. Um, we use an independent tracker uh, that gives us independent communication and independent control of each row. Um, and then um, our tracker is a balanced design that allows for longer rows and faster tracking. Uh, either moving to a stow position or uh, if we're moving the row to um, optimize uh, power output. And then number three, if you can look over there and see the um, smart panel, you'll see that the smart panel is the same length as the module. So um, it being the same length, we uh, we can see when the smart panel is shaded and that allows us to know that the module is being shaded and then we can adjust that tracker to prevent the shade. Um, so long-term design. Uh, we always think long-term when it comes to our design. We uh, raise our module mounting rail to prevent backside shading. Uh, this is for bifacial uh, panels. We use smart panel that has shade detection, which I just went over. And we work with all the module companies to ensure compatibility with our design and ease of install. All right, so our fasteners, we use a lock bolt two piece fastener. It's installed with a power tool that's similar to a cordless drill. Uh, if you look at the picture, you can see the dark gray portion is the tool and you can see it applying tension to the bolt and collar with a preset load. It then crimps the collar to the bolt. The collar is the orange portion. And uh, this prevents over torquing and under torquing. It eliminates the use of torque wrench and um, the, faster is more, the fastener is more accurate to install. So we see times of two to four times faster depending on the size of the bolt and um, these fasteners have zero maintenance for the life of the tracker, for the life of the power plant. Uh, there's no torque checks. Um, they don't loosen from vibration. So it's set it and forget it. Um, our trackers are designed for extreme weather. Um, all major components, if you, if you notice on that right picture, are mounted at the highest part of the pier. And in addition, we design our sites uh, based on expected wind and flooding for the region. So if you can see that guy's in a kayak um, going underneath the rows and all of our major electronic components are completely dry. Hey, hey Chris, can I add on to that slide there for you? Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, to make the note, um, you know, more and more of these sites that we're uh, developing are no longer in flat rectangular regions in California and Arizona um, we're seeing, and I'm sure our customers are seeing this as well, that more and more projects are in, you know, slightly more challenging regions with undulating terrain, maybe being built in flood zones and things like that. And as such, the risk of using Next Tracker is far less than using a product that might have electronic components at lower levels. Uh, and it really allows you to go into these designs and mitigate that risk uh, by using a product that has elevated these, um, it's electronics all above that. So what we basically do is we work with our customers to get a hydrology report. We identify the low points at a site. 
and we, we figure out how low the modules will be and where all the, the system needs to be built. And typically our product can get by with very little elevation change uh, in the design, which again, is just gonna save the customer's money in the long run. Uh, so just wanted to add that. Yeah, thanks Bill. So O&M optimization, um, since our tracker is self-powered, there's way less wire management so if the DC runs are buried, as shown here, uh, there's an in inhibited access to every row. Um, this means that your O&M guy, he could drive uh, down every single row and access a controller with his vehicle instead of uh, getting out and walking a field. Um, and you can see uh, this picture on the right where they're cleaning rows. Um, we actually have it set up so if he has double cleaners, he can clean both rows at the same time. And if you look in the in the background, you can see how long that can extend. So they can go through and um, continually clean all the way down. And this is a huge time saver um, for cleaning the rows. It's it's um, greatly simplified, and um, means your own M team can be on site a lot less time. So I'll hand this over to you, Bill. Yeah, and I think that's a that's a good segue into you know our our smart control software is, is, you know, having these independently actuated rows is really the driving factor in what allows us to develop these, these really cool software technologies. So, um, you know, I'm personally, I'm, I'm in the, from the engineering and, and technical world and, and solar, and, you know, we all spend our entire life trying to find ways to drive pennies out of, out of the, the uh, material costs to uh, help deploy more solar. And, you know, we're at a point where it's getting harder and harder to find that penny. Um, you know, we've all engineered our products so well that, you know, there's not a whole lot more we can take out of just the CapEx cost. So, you know, really Next Tracker is fo focused mostly on the OpEx cost and these software technologies are just super exciting stuff. So I, you know, I urge you, we're gonna, we're gonna sort of touch, them on, touch on them here and in, in um, high level, you know, and I'll give an overview, but I urge you to, you know, reach out to your next tracker representative to learn more because, you know, when you talk about, you know, reducing your CapEx by a penny uh, or increasing your energy production by, you know, you know, percentage points, one, two, three, maybe even five percentage points, it's, it's a totally different, uh, it's a game changer to the, uh, the industry. So um, this is what we're going to talk about here, our True Capture and NX Navigator and it's uh, really cool stuff. So go ahead and switch to the next slide. So True Capture, um, we developed this product in 2017. We actually acquired a company um, at the, in that same year called uh, Brightbox, and uh, Brightbox had some, uh, you know, interesting uh, building automation software tools and IP that uh, had um, some correlating things that could be used with our trackers. So. Uh, we were able to bring that team on board uh, and task them with uh, developing True Capture, which so True Capture at its in a macro level is a yield enhancing software tool, and uh, it can help self-adjust individual tracker rows uh, to eliminate uh, shading and to uh, increase performance in lower radiance uh, times or diffuse light conditions. Um, so you know, just again, this is such a great tool. You know, when it comes to reducing capex is one thing, and everyone's driving hard for that. But if you can, you know, take a take a site that would otherwise have not performed this well and increase your performance by up to six percent, um, again, it's just it's opening up areas that otherwise couldn't be used for, um, you know, for deploying solar or just wouldn't make economical sense. So go to the next slide, and I'll, I'll talk in more detail about what um, what each does. So True Capture, there's really uh, two problem statements that we're trying to solve with our True Capture smart control system. Uh, and these problems exist in all single access trackers uh, and they've existed since uh, single access trackers have started using um, the same algorithm back in the early 90s. Uh, and we all plug in the same backtracking algorithm. It's, it's from NREL, um, it's developed you know, many, many years and decades ago. And what we found is that you know, that algorithm is based on the world being flat. And the world isn't flat, as we all know. And when you're estimating your performance based on tracking systems, all having the same uh, height uh, relative to each other's rows, 
then you're going to have interrow shading on certain sites. And yeah, some sites will have less and some sites will have more depending on, you know, the, um, the tolerances at which they're installed as well as the, you know, how much undulating terrain is there. Um, but like I said, when we started the talk, uh, more and more sites are, you know, not flat and not rectangular and more and more sites are being built in irregular shape boundaries and in areas that have rolling terrain. And um, so the first aspect of our true capture smart control system is what we call road to road tracking. And what this does is instead of every tracker following an exact position of the sun um, and all of them being in nice straight lines, which is what a lot of people historically would like to see when you went to a site is, yeah, they all look great. They're all even. Um, the reality is, is most likely because of those angles, they're all gonna be, or in some cases, they're going to be casting a shadow on themselves. And you can see in the top portion here on the left side uh, in this, this graph is, or this, uh, this image is, uh, you know, if they're all at the same angle and one row is higher than another row uh, adjacent to it, it can cast a shadow on it. So what Next Tracker does is we measure those, um, we very precisely measure those height differences uh, during the commissioning phase of our, our tracker uh, being built. And then we reprogram so we can identify through that measurement process exactly when and where the shading is going to occur at all different times of year and throughout the site. And then we can reprogram every single tracking row, which you couldn't do if the rows were linked or if you didn't have the smart technology built in with uh, very advanced controllers. So we reprogram the tracker rows so that they one row adjacent to another that might be higher during the day will back off ever so slightly to eliminate the shading on the adjacent row. And we can do it to the tune of the shade hitting the, the edge of the panel, the frame of the panel versus the hitting the uh, cells of the panel. So it's very precise measurements um, and it's, uh, it's been very well received. So the second problem statement we're trying to solve is, you know, in a diffuse um, condition or a lower radiance condition, sometimes even in hazy conditions where we're seeing these fires happen in, um, in California and in the West Coast, uh, in these conditions, the irradiance levels can be as such where you don't really want to follow the sun to an exact angle. Um, that could actually mean you're, you're not producing at the optimal way during that time. So uh, what we do is we deploy GHI sensors throughout the site, uh, around the site, so that we can measure irradiance levels in multiple touch points. Uh, and then our trackers can make a logical decision that, you know, is this just one cloud rolling over or is it a diffuse um, are we in, the, in what we might call a diffuse day? And uh, if we're in that condition, the trackers will then go to a flatter position, sometimes flat, sometimes slightly towards the sun at a five or 10 degree angle if it's uh, either east or west. And then the trackers will significantly produce more during that time versus being at a position towards the sun. Uh, both of these together can see upwards of 6%. The row to row on a highly undulating site you can see three to 4% increase in performance uh, by going with true capture versus a standard tracking methodology. And then diffuse light, uh, on, on, you can see upwards of 2% gain on a highly diffuse area like the Eastern seaboard or the Northeast part of the country. So um, Chris, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, so we're able to do all this again, you know, sort of the theme of the presentation is it being smartly connected and and smart plan operations. And we're able to do this because we, we collect a, a significant amount of data on our site. Um, as, as of late, say in the last two years, Next Tracker has started including what we call our NX Data Hub in our site. The NX Data Hub is basically an aggregator of, uh, it's, a, it's a sort of a small computer that gets installed either on, a, on the site at a local O&M building um, or at a customer's uh, housed uh, uh, location and that data hub aggregates the NCUs and SBCs into one location and allows it to speak intelligently back to the owner's SCADA or um, to another location. Uh, so this is provided for very streamlined communication throughout the plant. Uh, go ahead, next slide, Chris. So, you know, at first glance, most folks will look at this and think this is two pictures, um, and I probably would as well, but this is. What you're seeing here is an example where we did some beta testing at a project site with our true capture technology. And um, on the lower portion of the site, we have standard tracking methodology uh, being deployed. So the panels are all at the same angle and they're all facing uh, 
the certain uh, the position of the sun. And then on the northern, on the top of the picture, uh, we have true capture deployed. So we did this in an effort to see what the what the difference would be and how the performance would be achieved, the greater performance would be achieved between the two blocks at, a, at the exact same site. Uh, and you can see here, the picture on the top is, a, is got tracker rows either more aggressively or less aggressively tracking the sun in, in an effort to eliminate the shade on every single row. And you can see on the, on the lower picture where that shade would have been otherwise during that time of day. So every single row in those you know, seven or eight rows are ha having shade on them, which is, you know, significantly or just totally reducing the performance of those, those strings of modules on that block. So um, the beauty of this is, is, you know, the northern picture you can see, or sorry, the picture on the top, you can see that very little light is actually passing through and hitting the ground. So that's the goal is to capture as much sun as we can while not allowing shading to occur on the panels. You can go ahead and click to the next one. So yeah, when we, you know, this is, true capture is not something that a, can be plugged into PV Syst and, you know, modeled. Uh, it's very specific to Next Tracker's technology. It's, it's very cutting edge stuff. Um, and as such, we knew that we had to work with um, the lenders and the independent engineers to get them comfortable with the performance modeling, uh, which is really uh, to start the, the process of deploying true capture is done by Next Tracker. So, um, so if we have a site that you're looking at, you'll, you know, we'll evaluate the slopes and the design and, and we'll go through and we'll use our own modeling software and tech techniques to figure out, you know, what the system would pr produce without true capture and then what it would produce with true capture turned on. And that would be your benefit estimate at the site. Um, but in order to get that underwritten into a project, you know, we certainly realized that we had to get all of these independent engineers comfortable with uh, the technology. So we've worked with all these folks on the top half of the uh, slide here, all the major IEs throughout the industry in the world. Uh, they've all signed off on it. We have a third party independent um, technology review and bankability report done uh, that we can share with customers under NDA. Um, and then as such, once you get that uh, to a point where we can get it underwritten and, and approved and agreed upon with an IE, then you can start getting the, um, the owners and the EPCs to um, purchase the, the software and incorporate it into their into their project. So you know the the lower half of the right side is a who's who of who's used uh, True Capture, and um, we're very proud of this list, and we've worked hard to get them comfortable with it over the last three years. Um, and of the 40 gigawatts of trackers we've deployed globally, we now also have nine gigawatts of True Capture sold globally. About half of that is actually operational; the other half is being deployed as we speak. Um, and uh, that's over 85 projects on five continents. So I encourage all of you to take a close look at True Capture for your projects. You can go ahead and switch to the next slide. Okay, so NX Navigator, this is, you know, sort of goes hand in hand with uh, True Capture. Um, NX Navigator, so True Capture is your yield enhancement software. NX Navigator is, um, it's an advanced controls platform which allows authorized users to uh, really have a more granular control of their sites um, to allow for better operation, more secure operation during inclement weather. And uh, as such, it really opens up and allows for um, higher levels of yield and more reliability with your site. So I'll talk more about how it works if you want to go to the next slide, Chris. <clears throat> so NX Navigator, uh, this is basically a tool, it's an, a web-based, application-based tool that we can give to our customers. Um, uh, it comes with True Capture as a, a way to um, give that authorized user. So any user can view the system and see what NX Navigator is doing, uh, and it will give them a very granular look at how the trackers are performing, what the health of the system is, if there's, uh, you know, if it's in true capture mode or if it's in um, regular tracking mode, uh, if there's failures, if there's alerts, if it's in a stow position, not in a stow position, uh, it gives you a very, um, very easy user uh, interface into what the system is doing. But then for an authorized user, somebody that a customer would say, this person is somebody that we want to be able to control the system, it can be used as a tool to protect it during inclement weather. Uh, so it's a safety tool uh, we developed this tool when a customer came to us and 
had some problems with a, a hail at a site they were working on and they wanted us to see if we could find a way to protect the panels during hail events. So uh, NX Navigator allows you to, in the event that hail is coming, you can go in and, and at the click of a button, tell the panels to go into a full tilt mode versus if that hail is occurring at flat, the panels would be very susceptible to damage during that time versus at full tilt where they would uh, be better protected in the event of hail. Um, it also has a, a really nice function with uh, snow shed and you know, as we're seeing more and more projects be deployed in northern climates uh, in snowy conditions, if you're just relying on your on-site snow sensors uh, with our system, then what's going to happen is as you see a certain rate of accumulation and a certain total amount of accumulation of snow, the trackers will simply go into full tilt so that the snow sloughs off the panels and it protects the panels from being overweighted. And uh, what we can do here is with Navigator, again, an authorized user can go in and say, hey, it's a snowy day. I want to continue to harvest as much sun and energy as I can during this day while still protecting the panels. So the way we can do that is you can tell Navigator, you can program it to say, okay, in the, in the mid morning, say 10 a.m., we're going to tell the panels to go into a, a, snow, um, a snow stow, which is a full tilt position for 15 minutes allow the snow to slough off the panels, allow the panels to warm up in that position so everything, um, the panel's clear. And then after 15 minutes is up, the trackers can go back into operation until say later in the afternoon when maybe a little bit snow, more snow is piled up on the panels, say it's three o'clock now, the snow can then slough off the panels. We can go into a, a snow stove for 15 minutes to the west, drop the snow off the panels and go back into track mode for the rest of the evening. Uh, this again is a is a, a tool that we like because it allows you to, you know, just have that more granular um, control of the system, and which ultimately will allow you to perform better uh, and produce more energy. So, and then I want to talk about our map view real quick. So, Chris, if you could uh, maybe click over the next slide. So this is really cool. Um, I'm a CAD guy in my previous years, so this is basically an as-built CAD drawing of your system that gets put into a, an application here. You can zoom in and out of it. Uh, a little bit hard to see on this slide, but those white boxes are the identifiers for our network control units. Um, the white lines are your tracker rows and every tracker row has a self-powered uh, controller and SPC at it. So you can very clearly with a click of a button see when and where any kind of issues are arising with the site. Say you have a, a battery fault or a motor fault um, occurring. You can zoom right into it. You can see where it is physically located on the site. So your O&M service techs can have this. You can deploy them to the site and they can very easily access any kind of problems that, they're, they're, um, they're, that are occurring at the site. It just really gives you a lot more uh, flexibility and, and um, ability to maintain your system. So uh, this is great stuff. It also has the ability to um, provide heat maps, which, you know, as we're measuring um, you know, we talked about our smart controller on every tracker row. That smart controller has the ability to measure irradiance as well as shade uh, that's occurring. And eventually we'll be able to show what the irradiance levels are throughout the site within a heat map. Um, so really cool stuff. Um, and uh, it's available today and we launched this product early this year. So uh, Chris, you can go to the next slide. All right, so extreme weather. Um, <clears throat> extreme weather is going to be the most important thing when it comes to dealing with the PV plant. And we've put a lot of thought into our hardware design and software tools uh, that I'll go over. So here you can see weather is the number one source of PV insurance claims. Um, and uh, climate change is just making extreme weather more, more common. And you can see this chart on the side here, 50% uh, of insurance claims are due to weather. So we, ad we address this. Um, yeah, so I think, thank you, Chris. I think this, um, you know, kind of dovetails nicely to the, you know, the true capture technology, uh, improving performance in challenging areas and what you can see, you know, the, the diagram to the left. And Chris, if you just click a couple times, we can see these are basically highlighting, you know, severe weather patterns that are occurring, you know, in the U.S. And most of them are occurring in areas, uh, you know, east, you know, middle of the country all the way to the east, where most of the historic solar projects have been deployed and the largest penetration is on the west and now what we're seeing as a market trend is more and more projects being built in the middle to the eastern part of the country so handling these um, 
you know, more challenging weather conditions as well as climate change causing more challenging weather conditions um, is, is going to be an integral part to ensuring that these plants are functioning uh, very well and they're meeting the design lives and the useful lives that, that people want them to meet. Um, so yeah, Next Tracker, like I said, 25 gigawatts of projects deployed globally and, and a large portion of that is in these very challenging sites. So uh, NX Navigator is, is really a tool that's going to help ensure the, the performance and reliability of systems throughout that. Uh, go ahead, Chris, next slide. <clears throat> yeah, so future-proofing your power plant. Um, <clears throat> you can see this picture here. This is a tracker site in Texas. Uh, it experienced hail damage in 2019 and subsequently had a $70 million insurance claim. There was over 400,000 damaged mm -hmm. modules. Um, it's, it's good to note that this is not a next tracker site. Uh, as one of our competitors. Um, and um, using our different software tools, we've managed to increase the survivability of hail from about 81 to 99 and a half percent, a huge increase and um, should lead to lower insurance claims, which can lead to lower insurance um, payments that, that these companies need to make. Yeah, so again, as we were, you know, the, um, that project that Chris was showing, it's, it's not a next tracker, um, you know, that's not our horizon technology being deployed there, but it is one of our, our largest customers and, um, you know, very uh, trusting customers. So we wanted to work with them. They came to us and asked us if we could uh, d help develop a product that will, you know, help improve the survivability rate of their solar panels in these situations. And even more so, help to reduce the insurance premiums and builders risk uh, and deductibles that are associated with that because I think we're all seeing those uh, rates increase right now which is a you know not the way we want to see costs go for our plants. Uh, so as such we deployed a uh, uh, independent engineering firm Retsi uh, to do some testing and um, help us better understand how panel solar panels are impacted by hail uh, and if you want to go ahead and click the slide here, we can show you a quick demonstration of that testing. So this is a video on the left here. You're seeing a panel uh, facing, or that's flat, it's horizontal. And on the right, what you're seeing is panel that's at 60 degree tilt. So that's next tracker stow position, basically it's full tilt position uh, that if you utilize NX Navigator, you have the ability during a hail storm position or a hail storm to turn the panels very quickly uh, and safely to that position. So as you can see, the damage that a panel is going to occur uh, under these test conditions is far more significant when a panel is flat, which also is uh, the time of day that hailstorm usually occurs is, you know, midday and, um, you know, is when the panels are flat. So having the ability to turn the panels to 60 degrees very quickly is good uh, and obviously improves the survivability here. So I think you can go to the next slide. Yeah, so, um, you know, talked a bit about this stuff. Um, here's a, on the left here, we're seeing, you know, a, a sample screenshot from NX Navigator, um, which is just giving you lots of good analytics uh, for a site. This is a, just a snapshot. So it's, it's just an indicative, um, you know, sort of thing that's going on at one of our sites. But, you know, it, it allows you to have the ability to go in and um, very quickly adjust the systems uh, angles and how it's performing. So um, just wanted to highlight what that looks like and what you're seeing. And as a result, again, we're, we're able to increase the survivability and, and protection of the panels in, in, um, uh, significantly. So you can go to the next, next slide. Tale of two designs. So um, this is a great, great picture here. Um, it's an example of an X-Tracker site right next to a competitor's. And um, the wind that this area experienced was 50% of the design for both trackers. And you can see the next tracker site um, experienced zero failures and the other site had quite a bit of damage. So um, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but the wind was coming from this direction and this direction here. And you can see that this damage um, continued to go all the way back here and kind of scattered around. Um, so not only does the um, 
damage obviously costs money, but then the downtime that's associated with it, the ordering of the new panels, the install for all of it, it, it causes quite a bit of downtime. So preventing that in the first place is, you know, really helpful and, yeah, and Chris, um, huge cost savings. Yeah, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I just want to add, you know, it's, we have this arrow here pointing at the direction of the wind and then we're seeing in the, the top of the picture where the affected area is on the, the, the tracker that's not next tracker, but the whole other half of that tracker system that wasn't impacted, the reason it wasn't impacted is because it was protected by next tracker. You know, we basically acted as a windshield um, for that whole system. So, you know, just sort of highlighting that, you know, this could have been even far worse than it was, which it's already totally detrimental to the system that you know, they've had significant downtime and large portions of that site aren't going to function ever really the way it was intended. Um, so, you know, we really encourage our customers to do deep dives into the kind of wind, wind studies that we've done, you know, including dynamic and static wind studies uh, and, you know, take a hard look at, you know, all the testing that's been performed when choosing your single access tracker provider. Yeah, exactly. It's important to uh, partner with a uh, tracker provider that's going to be doing all this, all these dynamic testings that we do. So thanks, Bill. Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> so design and software changes for install in higher wind areas. If you look in the background here, uh, you can see these wind turbines. So this site is already expected to receive high winds and sustained winds. Um, this is this is also not a next tracker site. Um, and, and you can see with these high winds and, and mostly sustained winds, all this damage that can occur if you don't have the hardware design and software tools to be ready for that. Um, uh, for, for sites like this, we have um, a product called Stage Stow, and it's a strategy where for sustained winds, we can stow uh, portions of the site and when those are stowed, it'll protect the adjacent rows. So that allows us to operate, instead of being in a stow position with these mild wind events, we could go to a reduced power um, semi-stowed position and still have, um, still be making, you know, 70, 80% of the power as if we we're tracking fully and without causing damage to the site. All right, so moving on to flooding, <clears throat> we use dynamic flood sensors, and these protect panels from submerging, um, but we can also stow just a portion of the site. So uh, we're seeing more and more sites that are spread out over large areas, and um, the topography changes are, um, are huge. So there's some, some areas that are going to be susceptible to flooding while others aren't on the same site. And um, like I said, we use dynamic flood sensors, so we're able to stow the portions of the site that we're worried about flooding during flood events, and the remainder of the site can continue to track so that we can optimize power output for the site. All right, value of connectivity. Um, it's really important to our customers and an X tracker that we have connectivity to our sites. This um, speeds up warranty replacements, so it allows us to analyze trends that lead up to a failure of one of our products. And um, using, using that trend, we can determine what the failure was, what the root cause was, the failed part, and we can ship a replacement with little delay. Um, the other option is without connectivity, working with the O&M team and trying to triage what the issue is, what the part is, what the part that needs to be replaced is. It just takes a lot more time if we don't have connectivity. Um, and also the data that we're collecting, we use it to continue and make changes to hard, hardware and software for our site. Um, <clears throat> the customers are going to see this in firmware upgrades. So a few slides back when I was talking about uh, stage stow being implemented on sites, um, we were able to install stage stove for a customer over a year after uh, the site had been uh, commissioned. So they were saying that they were having 
um, power drop out and they were having sustained mild winds and were able to implement stage stow um, so that during those mild events, they could still gain some extra power. And we were able to see those trends because we had connectivity to the site and we were able to offer them you know, this free firmware upgrade and resolve that issue for them. Um, proactive O&M. So moving O&M from reactive to predictive. This allows clients to schedule maintenance when it's a lot more convenient for them. Instead of rolling a truck to fix one issue, they can um, schedule a time to make larger replacements. And, um, and uh, it, it just is, it's really more convenient, especially for some of these sites that are in remote locations and they don't have o &M teams on them all the time. They can kind of group them all together and uh, be a lot more be a lot more efficient with their resources when, when making these uh, O&M replacements. All right, so um, you can see here that tracker O&M costs is relatively low in comparison to the rest of the PV plant. And we're still continuing to lower that cost. And like I said, with predictive analytics, our clients can schedule around other maintenance that they already have planned. If they're gonna be on site, uh, doing a transformer replacement or um, doing some work on the inverters, they can also uh, go ahead and knock out all the PV O&M that's going to be required during that time. All right, so how does predictive analytics work? <clears throat> so we monitor sites and um, we can see what leads up to a failure and we can follow those trends. With that data, um, we can predict when another failure is going to happen again. So visibility into our sites, we have over 350,000 trackers uh, that are pulling data, and that data totals over 300, uh, I'm sorry, three terabytes. So as you can imagine, our analytic team has grown quite a bit over the last few years to handle all this um, new data that we're pulling in. But uh, with that group collective um, amount of data, it really allows us to dial in, you know, sending, seeing these trends and predicting failures. Um, path to 100% uptime through data. So with that much data, like I was saying, uh, we can accurately um, and reliably find the root cause of failures remotely and forecast future failures. We have a slide coming up that's going to give us a case sample. So this is a good example here. Um, this is a this is tracking a uh, motor current for a damper lower mount slip. Um, on our generation one, we had dampers that were held together with um, nuts and bolts. And if it wasn't properly torqued, um, they could slowly slip down the pier. So um, this is monitoring motor, motor current. And um, at the end here, you can see that the tracker stalled. So when we look over here to the left, and this is uh, about a month out before the tracker fails, we can see that the current slowly starts to go up. This threshold is, is reached and we can actually um, look for these on, look for this trend on other sites. And when we see this trend, we know that in three to four weeks, we're gonna have a motor stall. So with this data, um, we can let our clients know, hey, uh, we have these four um, areas that you need to look at. The, there's a damper that's slipping and um, the motor's gonna fail in three weeks. When you have somebody on site, you might wanna Go look at these. Go look at these um, three rows and take care of that. So this this helps us change um, O and M from reactive to predictive, like I like I've been talking about previously. Oops. All right. So um, some of our offerings. So digital O and M monitoring and predictive maintenance, uh, which we went over. True capture. 
um, and Stage Stow, NX Navigator, different software tools for site management, NX Data Hub and Tracker CX. And um, Bill, maybe you want to go over the different services that we offer. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so you know, Next Tracker has uh, tons of backend technical support to help with all of your, you know, pre-development activities, whether it be design support, engineering support for foundations and all kinds of different technical. We have lots of performance engineers and software engineers on staff, so you can help with that. It's also very important to get trained as a new customer to get your teams trained on how to install and learn the most efficient ways to build our product. So um, we put on a, a, a program called PowerWorks Academy, which is where we invite our customers once a quarter to come and, and do a very in-depth three-day training program. Uh, it's been on hold during COVID, but we'll start it back up uh, as soon as possible. Um, upgrade programs, ESA, Extended Services Agreement, which is um, you know, basically getting more coverage on your system for long-term. Uh, a tool rental program for installing all of our fasteners, uh, really important to understand that appropriately. Uh, replacement parts and then commissioning, obviously we provide the commissioning on site uh, as a part of our uh, sales process. Yeah, and you know, we're kind of wrapping up here before we take on some questions. Uh, I guess, again, I just want a big shout out to so many people being on the call and, and listening in. There's lots of questions about uh, getting this presentation and more information and connections to Next Tracker folks. So, you know, this is, we're gonna sort of follow up here with a lot of additional information. Ali will send out uh, some links and, and things like that. And uh, you can see on the left here is what you receive. Uh, on the right, the top here is, uh, the schedule, we do these webinars pretty regularly and uh, we're almost at the end of it. There is another one tomorrow for if you have any customers that are in the LATAM Spain area and Spanish speaking folks, uh, it'll be on tomorrow. You can listen into that. And um, yeah, I, I, again, just a big thanks to everybody. Great, well, thank you guys for going through that, um, the long process of, of speaking through all the, the amazing stuff that we do at Next Tracker. There have been questions coming in, so I'm just gonna dive in really quickly to the first one. And this one should be pretty easy for all of us. How long or how, how yeah, how long is the um, Spark panel in meters or feet? Um, so we have uh, different uh, links of the Smart panel to match up uh, whatever the length of the modules that we're using for the site. So we'll, we'll match those up once we know which, um, which module provider um, is going to be on the site. Great. And, and Ali, just to add on to that, I, I saw another question if it was included. The smart panel comes with our system, whether you purchase True Capture and Navigator or not. Uh, it is a part of the system and that allows us to go back and add True Capture, you know, at a later date if needed. Okay. Um, great. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. So thank you Sorry. for covering that. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, so the next question on our list is how do you suggest capturing an average POA value for contract purposes for performance guarantees with true capture? Well, you can install a POA um, in, in test areas around the site as a part of the tracking system. Um, you know, that's sort of post installation way of capturing POA. Um, if you're looking to do it, you know, pre-site, uh, you'd have to work with an independent engineer to deploy some MET stations or just use uh, TMY data um, to best understand how it will perform. Okay. Um, our next question, uh, does the NX Horizon Tracker have the ability to sense the angle of the hail storm and then track to the opposite direction to avoid the hail altogether? So, yeah, I'll, I'll grab it first, Chris, and then please add on. Um, so, you know, our recommended position during uh, a storm event where there might be high winds is into the wind um, because that reduces the wind pressures on the back side of the panels. Uh, the question is asking if we can turn in that reverse direction um, to protect the panels completely so that they're basically the back side is, or the front side is not exposed at all to the panels. Um, it, it is certainly possible, but then that exposes the backside of the panels to higher wind loads. And in the event that you have higher wind loads, the panels will be more susceptible to damage. Now, if we can be ensured that there'll be uh, lower winds during that hailstorm, then we could certainly do that. But 
uh, highly recommend, but you know, on a given site, you want to better understand that, let's work with your next tracker representative, do a deep dive, and uh, we can look more into how to best perform in those situations. Thank you. One more question. How does the irradiance optimization tracking feature in PVSYS compare with true capture yield? And do you guide customers to utilize this feature for indicative development efforts where there is not a true capture site specific estimate yet? Yeah, so um, PVSYS has made you know, leaps and bounds improvements to their technology to incorporate some irradiance tracking um, uh, features. It is not totally consistent with what Next Tracker is doing with true capture. So there are going to be differences plus and minus on any given site. Um, what we recommend is, again, you work with Next Tracker, do a deep dive into our performance modeling for standard track mode versus uh, using true capture. And you can, we can provide tons of data, 8760 reports with breakdowns of every angle that the panels are at during uh, a standard track mode and, and where that shading is going to occur. And then, you know, that same 8760 report at every angle with, you know, true capture on and how we're eliminating and how that performance will be improved during those times. Uh, so it's kind of apples to oranges, the, the irradiance functions in PVSYS versus what Next Tracker is doing. So I'd say get involved with your rep from Next Tracker and, and do a deep dive. And then as needed, we, you know, when you're getting ready to deploy or, or trying to get that extra performance and extra production underwritten for, through a financing partner on a specific project, you know, uh, Next Tracker can uh, work with your independent engineer um, to validate that performance modeling. And they're gonna be slightly different based on their models. So there's just a true up process that's, that'll need to be done there. Right. Um, does the hill still require human intervention or can you automatically detect hail? It, it's it's, it's uh, designed for human intervention. Um, at this time, you know, we've had some discussions about, uh, you know, predicting weather and, you know, tying our system into, um, you know, weather forecasting databases so that you can use it as a non-human interactive. But right now, NX Navigator is a device that an authorized user, you know, that's a asset manager, an O&M provider, somebody who's responsible for the site, when they either visually see that hail's happening or they look at a weather report that says hail is coming, they can very quickly go in and turn it in. So it's a click of the button from them uh, right now. Maybe Gen 2 will be a little bit more automated in that sense, but right now it's, it's a human interaction. So the next question kind of dovetails into that um, human interaction failure rates. Can we talk a little bit about um, vulnerability for additional electronics and how Next Tracker addresses backup plan if a tracker failed to stow and get stalled? Chris, I might let you take that one. Um, yeah, so um, <clears throat> if a tracker fails to go to a stow position, um, that is pretty rare. I think um, when I was going over the changes for Gen 1 to Gen 2, we have uh, almost zero motor failures uh, associated with the new brushless motor that we're using. Um, it is possible uh, for for you to have maybe one outlier on a very, very large site, but it's very, very rare that we have um, individual trackers that don't go to stow when we command a stow position. So all of our weather commands, whether it's snow, wind, or um, flood, uh, the way that they get broadcasted over our Zigbee command is different than the way that we pool data. So we don't even need communication with the actual tracker from the NCU. So if comms drops out momentarily um, because of the storm, the um, broadcast command will still go out to the different SPCs and um, they should be tracking to the stow position that we're commanding. All right, so we are at the top of the hour. Um, these were some really good questions. So thank you so much for your time, for the presenters and for our audience for your time today. If you missed any part of this presentation um, or would like to hear it again, there will be, it will be available on demand for the next couple of days. There will be a link in the thank you email that we'll send you along with all of the resources discussed earlier today. Um, thank you so much once again, and this is the end of today's webinar.